Hi, Stanislaw here, and today we'll be covering the basics of Motion VFX's M Puppet plugin. M Puppet is a great way to animate different characters, photos, and much, much more right inside Final Cut Pro 10 and Apple Motion 5. Let's take a look at how to use it. Inside Final Cut Pro, I've already imported an image of a 2D character with a transparent background. I'd like to animate it. To find M Puppet, navigate to your Generators tab, scroll down, and select the M Puppet group. Inside, you'll find two generators, M Puppet and M Puppet with Motion Blur. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about using the one without Motion Blur, but you've got to check out the other one too when you've got the chance. It's even more awesome. Once we drag and drop one onto your timeline, nothing really happens. All we see is a black solid. That's because we need to pick the image we'll be animating. To use my 2D character image, all I need to do is click on the Source Drop Zone parameter, then pick it from the Event Browser, and confirm my selection by hitting Apply Clip. With the M Puppet Generator selected, I can see a movable panel with a series of controls on my canvas. These allow me to add handles, remove handles, select and manipulate multiple handles at the same time, as well as display the 2D mesh that drives my character's animation. To use M Puppet, we need an image with an alpha channel. Now, if we hover the mouse cursor over an area that's not transparent, it becomes highlighted. To create a new handle, make sure the Add Handles tool is selected and click on the highlighted area. For characters, it's a great idea to place handles where there may be joints. Once the handles are added, I can drag any of them in the viewport and check how my puppet will behave. Already you can see how organic its movement is. Now that I think on it, my animation won't need these two knee handles, so I'm going to delete them really quickly. To do this, I need to switch to the Remove Handles tool and click them in my viewport. I'll also add two new handles at his feet. This way they will stay locked when animating the rest of my character. As mentioned before, the selection tool lets me easily control more than one handle at the same time. When enabled, I can draw a frame around multiple handles and then move them by dragging it with my mouse. Rotate them by dragging outside one of its corners. Or scale the bounding box by dragging one of these small rectangles. When I place my first handle, and Puppet created a mesh for the area I highlighted. This mesh is the base for a character's deformation. So it's good to check it out. I can do that by clicking the Show Mesh button on our toolbar. You can see that it deforms exactly the same way as my image. With the M Puppet Generator selected, I can go to Final Cut's Inspector, and in the Generators tab, I can see that settings for this exact mesh are now available. The Mesh Preview tells me which density preset will be best for deforming my character the way I like. If it has a lot of curvy edges, I may want to increase it a bit to make sure it will bend nicely. If not, sticking with a less complex one will let me work a little bit faster. I can also use the Mesh Preview to check if my entire character is inside the mesh or not. If not, I can increase its range by increasing the expansion value. Everything looks good, so I'm going to turn off the Mesh Preview for now and continue with the handles. Inside the Handles group, we've got controls for each handle. We can control their X and Y coordinates to move them up and down in the viewport, as well as their depth, which will be very useful for moving them behind or in front of other handles. Keeping track of which handle is which is really easy too. I just hover the mouse cursor over one and the tooltip tells me exactly which parameters control its position and depth. You've probably noticed that I missed two options from the handles group, interpolation and the reset buttons. We'll go back to them once we've added some animation to our character. Before we start animating our character, let's place a simple background behind him. This will make our composition a bit more interesting. I'm going to add some movement to this guy. Add keyframes to a couple of the handles, move them to place, 
then move ahead in time, and so on. I'm going to repeat this process a couple of times and make him dance. Now I'd like to move my character back to his default pose. I could move the handles back by hand, but this really won't be the fastest or the most accurate way to do that. The reset handles button is meant exactly for that. Once clicked, the plugin will tell me that the handles will be reset to their initial positions. From here, I can pick whether I want to reset them entirely and delete their keyframes, or just move them back to their initial positions, which is our default. Using the latter, adding new keyframes to the animated ones, or remove the entire animation too. Not only that, if I switch the selection tool and select one or more of them, hitting the reset handles button will give me an additional option for resetting just the currently selected handles. Really useful stuff. Now that my animation is ready, let's see what the interpolation parameter does. The default option is smooth, so let's change it to linear and see what happens. The difference is clearly visible. The character's movement is no longer fluid, and it looks like a moving robot. After changing it to smooth again, our pretty continuous motion is back. We all know that Final Cut only supports linear keyframe interpolation, so this feature alone will make a huge difference in how your animations will look. As you can see, mPuppet allows us to easily animate images in Final Cut, but we don't have to stop there. We can dig even deeper and create much more complex animations in Motion 5, which gives us a lot more control over keyframed parameters. There are times when you have more than one object in your image that you'd like to animate. This isn't a problem for mPuppet because its generator lets us animate up to eight different objects within a single image. Here I have an image where the car and the luggage on top of it are separated. I'm going to add it to my mPuppet generator and scale it down a bit. When I hover my mouse cursor over each of them, I can see that they are being highlighted separately. Once I add handles to my car, mPuppet creates a new mesh for it and its settings appear within the inspector. Now when I add handles to my luggage, another mesh, this time called Mesh B, also appears within the inspector. We can add up to 8 meshes this way. To make animating easier, mPuppet tells us which handle belongs to which mesh. When I hover my mouse over the one on the car, the tooltip says A Handle 1. This means that this is the first handle of Mesh A, and I can animate it inside this group. Now when I hover over the other one, it says B Handle 1. So it's the first handle of Mesh B, and its controls can be found in this group. Each mesh has a color assigned to it. Here, the car's handles have a bluish tooltip, and we could already see that they belong to Mesh A with the same color. Likewise, tooltips for the luggage are yellow, just like Mesh B within the inspector. Each mesh has its own controls inside the inspector. Both have a density and shape expand options, as well as controls for their handles. But even though they are separated, mPuppet lets us control them together through on-screen controls. Let's check it out. First, I'm going to make sure I have the selection tool enabled, and draw a frame around handles that belong to both meshes. Now when I manipulate my selection, I can see that handles from both meshes are being moved and rotated together. I'm sure you'll appreciate this feature, especially when animating objects that are somehow connected, as with our luggage that is supposed to stay on top of our car most of the time. Okay, so these are the basics of animating images using mPuppet in Final Cut Pro. As you can see, it's a very powerful tool, and it's crazy fun to work with, so be sure to grab your own copy at MotionVFX.com. Again, my name is Stanislaw Liberta with Motion VFX. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.